Hi, today's talk is about Clerk, a moldable life programming toolkit for closure. I want to start this talk by dissecting the title a bit and how it relates to Clerk. So what is Clerk? First off, Clerk is not Jupiter. And although we introduced Clerk about a year ago as a tool for local first notebooks in closure, Clerk is actually way more than a notebook. Let's take a look at the most obvious differences. First, Clerk is no what you see is what you get or rich text editing environment. You can look at Clerk as your programming buddy, if you will, living side by side with your editor. You write your closure namespaces in your editor of choice and the Clerk will evaluate them. And Clerk is very fast at this, which brings me to one part of this talk's title, Live Programming. Clerk automatically caches results and only evaluates what's changed providing nearly instant feedback for a lot of use cases. And this suits Clerk well to use cases like computational art, where you want to have fast feedback loops. Here, for example, is the making of Clerk's logo by Jack Rusher. See how the new results appear almost instantly as we change the order of this Hilbert curve? Also, a Clerk notebook is just a closure namespace. There's nothing magical about it. This enables that your namespaces can be required as libraries and can be put into source control, just like any normal closure namespace. Okay, now the part of this talk's title that we've yet to look at is the word moldable. So what is moldable development? Tuda Gyaba, who coined the term, defines it as a way of programming through which you construct custom tools for each problem. And in some ways, with the repo, we use moldable programming all the time. Let's take a look at a concrete example that we recently dealt with. We're interacting with a very old database that has column names that are only eight characters long. And you can't read much out of this, but it turns out that there's a meta schema available that maps those eight character names to actual readable names. But it also turns out that they're in German only. So from that, we at least can build little tools to reason better about the data that's in a query. So for example, we might have something that maps the eight character names to the names in the meta schema, or even to the translated names. And when we inspect the query from the REPL, we can use the translated names in the table and maybe even print it. But you can see that there's a limit to what you can do with plain text. And this is where Clark comes in. With Clerk, we can go much further with this. First, we can render the query output as a nice looking strollable table. That's the minimum. But we can also extend Clerk's existing table viewer so that it automatically shows the translated meta schema names as table headers, plus show the original eight character names in a de-emphasized way so to, that they aren't lost. And you know what? Why not show the original German names to maybe on hover as you move your mouse over the table headers? So you see, we can mold these little tools, maybe extending existing ones that make our lives easier when reasoning about things. Another thing Clark can do is provide reactivity and interactivity through its sync mechanism. Let's take a look at this quick regex dictionary app. It works by entering a regex into a text input and the app shows you dictionary matches. You see on the right here that this is a merely 45 lines of code. The interesting bits here are that we define an atom that has clerk sync assigned to it via metadata. Then we assign a viewer to it, in this case, a text input viewer that's responsible for updating the atom's value as you type into the input. And down there, we just deref the atom using its value to match against a dictionary of words. And now, although all of this uh, is in a closure namespace and happens on a JVM, Clerk will update the atom when somebody types in a text input and re-renders the matches in the front end as the atom's contents change. This lets you inspect the atom's contents right from your editor. Also building on top of Clerk Sync, we can build fully customized interactive experiences too. This is Lurk, a log search dashboard that's powered by Lucene. 
It lets you filter logs by selecting a time frame from the graph or using a query box to filter by column name. In this case, the query box is actually a full CodeMirror 6 instance with closure mode and par edit functionality enabled. So for example, you can narrow down to all logs that contain specific words in the message column or to only the ones that are warnings or even combine the filters. Using Clark's CSS class option, we can provide custom CSS classes to our result viewers and use this to build app-like UIs. Looking at this, you wouldn't believe this all lives inside a Clark notebook. Another use case is providing library docs. What you see here are the docs for closure to these colors lib. It implements a set of custom Clark viewers to visualize colors and gradients. This is another good example of moldable programming. Once they have the nice color previews, they can then combine them with Clerk's built-in table viewer, so they have tables full of colors and gradients. The next example is quite dear to me. I work as a UI designer at NextJournal, and for a long time we would start by creating our user interfaces in dev cards and later trying to integrate them with the rest of the app. In the process of integration, the shape of the state might change a couple times, and always leaving additional work to make the dev cards work again after some keys have changed and so on. With Clerk, now we actually reverse this process. We first think about all the state, making a notebook that has all state generation in there, often with narrative and comments explaining everything. And then we develop viewers for all the existing state ending up with a notebook full of states, explanations, and the actual usable front-end, and maybe even API code that can be required from other namespaces. And it doesn't have to stop there. Since Clark's toolbox is open as much as possible, you can dream up all kinds of funky use cases. Here is one by my colleague Andrea, who built this open sound control Spirograph app that can be remote controlled by a touch device. Before I wrap this up, here's a little sneak peek of something else that we are building using Clerk, Tracy. Tracy is a code outliner and debugger. You pass it a closure form and it will visualize its structure, run it, and show all relevant intermediary results. If something produces an error, Tracy will show where the error happened. We think this could be another nice addition to the tool belt of little things that make your life easier down the line. Mind that this is highly experimental at this point, and we will follow up with more details as Tracy matures. Okay, so let's wrap this part up. Clerk tries to be as much an open toolbox as it can be. Be that what editor or source control you use it with, or which viewers you combine to best suit the problem at hand. So far, we mainly focus on Clerk's viewers API and mechanisms like controlling visibility or interactivity. But we also want to look into opening up Clerk's caching behaviors, for example. And another example is the text input that we saw earlier in the dictionary app. Eventually, we want to provide a comprehensive set of UI controls that come together with Clerk. Have we found all the right abstractions for this yet? Definitely not. We have in the past made breaking changes in order to improve the API, but we try to stay compatible as much as we can. And that's also why some of the new features typically start out in user space and then slowly migrate into Clerk's API. Now, the last part of this talk is something new that we want to introduce today, and that is Clerk Garden. Garden is a simple publishing platform for Clerk notebooks. How does it work? You start by opening your uh, Depths Eden file and add a next journal clerk alias to your depths aliases. The path inside exec args defines what notebooks will be built and published. You can use clock patterns for this if you want. If you don't want clerk to be part of your main depths, you can add it as, as an extra depth in the alias. Once it's done, you can try to build your clerk notebooks locally by running closure dash x next journal clerk and optionally prepend any extra aliases that your build needs. In this case, I'm bringing in the closure 2D alias. Since Steps Eden and Maven gives us a reproducible dependency graph, the chances are high that if your notebooks build locally, they will also work on Garden. 
Once the build is done, you can push to your public GitHub repository. And for when you do run into issues, we will provide you with a Garden Env, a Nix environment that gives you the same environment locally as on Garden. This makes debugging way easier than laboriously editing YAML files or debugging CI. So once everything is pushed to GitHub, you can provide your repo name to Garden and it will build your notebooks for you. The output here should be quite similar to what you saw earlier when building the notebooks locally. Let's take a look. Okay. When everything is done, Garden will show a button in the upper right corner and clicking it will bring you to your now published notebooks. The now available permalinks on Garden mirror GitHub's own URLs, either containing just the repo name or a full SHA. This makes linking back to GitHub easy, which is nice for reproducibility and collaboration. Okay, let's wrap up Garden. Garden is an easy to use static build and hosting system for cloud notebooks that for now works together with GitHub. And you can serve entire websites from it. What do we mean by entire websites? Well, if you look at uh, Clark's homepage or Garden's homepage, for example, they are in fact both fully customized Clark notebooks that are built and published with Garden. Eventually, you could do the same for your own website if you want. And to that end, we will be shipping public support for custom domains soon. And along with that, we will also release support for building private GitHub repositories. So your source does not have to be public eventually. Okay, that's everything we have for now. Please visit clerk.vision to learn how to get started with Clerk, and we recently also released the book of Clerk under book.clerk.vision. The book is Clerk's comprehensive documentation. In it, you will find everything Clerk can do at the moment. Also, please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions, either via uh, a GitHub issue or via the Clerk or Clerk Garden channels on the Clausurian Slack. And we'd also appreciate it if you gave Clerk a star on GitHub if you like it so far. Oh, and yesterday was the start of this year's Advent of Code. So if anybody is keen on trying out Clerk with Advent of Code, we've prepared a repository under nextjournal slash Advent of Clerk to get you started. Okay, that's it. I hope I got you interested in using Clerk and we can't wait to see what you'll be using it for. Thanks.